so good to me. I've never met a man quite like you before. At last, a real man. Oh, you're unbelievable. Big boy. What? You're with her? Oh. Can't believe you're like a spy for the little bitch. Uh, yeah? Well, I can't believe how childish you're being. Me? You're the one getting off another boat right in front of me. You think that was for your benefit? Get over yourself, Stuart. I wasn't born yesterday, Vicky. You could have fooled me. And what's that supposed to mean? Decker, Stuart. Go on, Decker. I mean the way you've been playing me for a fool lately. Telling me lies about you and your mixed up little girly. How many more times do I have to keep on telling you? Oh, nothing's going on, Vicky, I swear. I love you, Vicky. And I fell for it. Hook, line and sinker. Nothing is going on. Hang on, who are you talking about? Oh, enough of the lies, Stuart. You can't deny it anymore. I just caught you and that tramp together. Again! Are you talking about Mercedes? This one which features no one insults my sister but me. You've got it all wrong. Look, how many more times do I have to keep on telling you? You don't! Not anymore! Because I never want to see you again! You're a liar and a cheater, Ray. I'm too much of a coward to admit it. I should listen to my mother. She always said you couldn't be trusted. She said your eyes were too close together. I don't know what I ever saw in you. Doesn't that girl ever do anything but scream? Which? Vicky, wait, Vicky. Vicky! What the hell is going on between you and my sister? She's 15, you know. And what the hell's going on between you and my ex-girlfriend? Was the witch wizard wearing her broomstick? <sighs> Good riddance! You gonna tell me what that was all about? She's a friend, you know. Oh, Stuart should have decked her one. Russ! Listen to her, that witch did that. <laughs> I should have lobbed my pencil case out when I had the chance. Can't be a DJ. Who do you think she is? Russ, will you just shut up? No! <laughs> that witch needs to take her broomstick out of her arm. Russ! Oh, poor kid. Crying her eyes out, she is. Can barely talk for the tears. Did. Did Mercedes say why Vicky just flipped? <sighs> Said that Vicky's got it into her head that she split her and that Stuart up. <laughs> Said she'd had it in for her for months. Jealous how well they get on. He looks after her down at the youth centre, I think, and Vicky doesn't like it. Thought that girl had a screw loose. She was round here the other week accusing Mercedes of keying her car. Oh, and the name she called her today. <sighs> she thinks she's got Stuart into trouble now. Thinks he won't want to know her anymore. Bless her. <sighs> Couldn't get any more out of her after that. Tears just poured out of her. You see, I told you she was a witch. She probably whacked herself in the head too many times with a broomstick. Russ, why don't you just make yourself useful for once and go throw yourself down the sink? <sighs> Hello. Yeah, this is Russ Gross. What? Really? I don't want you bringing that Vicky girl here again, do you hear me? Yeah? Y yeah, all right, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, brilliant, all right. And I think you ought to think twice about getting so involved with her. She's clearly got the jam missing out of her donut. Mum, I... Oh, Paul, she's upset Russ and reduced Mercedes to tears all in the same day. Yeah, Moffat, yeah, he's my cat. He's, um, he's brilliant. He's actually, he's actually a superhero, yeah. Plus, judging by her behaviour tonight, she's clearly still hung up on that Stuart. <sighs> that Stuart's got a lot to answer for. What does he think he's playing that, leading Mercedes on like he is? Leading her on? Oh, come on. Your sister's been through a lot lately. He's just being kind. She's young, Paul. Looks up to him, I expect. Sees him as a father figure. Well, I'm a brother. She just took to me. Oh, if... Paul. She's probably taken a shine to him. Got a bit of a crush on him. It's only natural. <laughs> I was young once, you know. <laughs> I know what it's like to be that age. And I suppose it's natural for a grown man, a youth worker, to encourage a little crush, is it? Oh, you uh, read that article, did you? Well, they, they made it out to be a bigger deal than it really was. I mean, the worms weren't that big. 
I think I'll make us that cup of tea. What? Yeah, yeah, of course I'm interested, yeah. Okay, yeah, brilliant, yeah. Okay, fantastic. Okay, bye. Yes! I'm going to be a superstar. You are? Me and Muffet, we're going to be on TV. Oh, don't you start. I heard all that from your cousin Selena. Look what happened to her. Oh, Mum, that was Wormanay. Eh? They were sending Bradford Radical Heading Worms. Mouse or pets. They saw me in the paper and they want me and Muffet to be in their new advertising campaign for External Worm. How brilliant is that? Oh, that's great, love. Oh, it's better than great, Mum. Me and Muffet are going to be stars. And I'll finally have enough money to afford my decks. Proper decks. That'll show that wicked witch of the West how wrong she is. I, I will be a DJ. Oh, this is the best news ever. I've got to go and tell Muffet. <laughs> well, here we are, back home safe and sound. Bet you're glad to see the back of that hospital, aren't you? Come on, let's get you inside and rested. Remember, doctor's orders. This isn't mine. Come on, Gavin. I'm trying my best here, you know. This thing's really shaking me up too. I thought I was going to lose you for a moment. I've never been so frightened. So frightened you went against my dying wishes and called my mum? I didn't see you complaining whenever you thought your mum was on her way to see you. But she didn't come, did she? And she probably never will now because of your interference. Disturbing her when she's meant to be convalescing. I did what anybody in my position would have done. Gavin! You could have died. And what if my one dying wishes and my joke of a mum never found out? Sammy, what are you doing here? I got my dad to drop me over so I could come and see Gavin. How are you feeling? You look well. I've been better. Well, if you want to lift to school, you better get a move on. I've got to get back to work. The pressure's really on me. I can't hang around for you. So how are you? I bet you're glad to be out of that hospital. Oh, it's so good to see you like this. I was really worried. Yeah. Before I forget, I better give this to you. It's just a little special something. Hopefully it'll keep you out of mischief. Ooh, a present. Then I get one then. That's not fair. This is supposed to make up for what's happened. No, I know, but I've got to start somewhere. Look, Gavin, I know I'm not your favourite person at the moment, but I really care about you. You're like a son to me. Close as you get to heaven, one, eh? Sammy, you're going to be late for school. I can't hang around for you. Gavin! Hey, Mrs. S. Derek. I just thought I'd come see how Gavin was here. What are you saying, Gav? Selena's really trying. Just whose side are you on? I'm not on anyone's side. Hey, guys. Look, both of you need to sort this out. She's been like a mother to you. Whatever happened with your real mum? It's her who's taking care of you. My dad said Selena and Uncle Patrick were working through troubles of their own when they took you in. You can at least be thankful to her for that. Yeah, think about it. I mean, if you hadn't come stay with Selena, you would never met us guys. Shame. <laughs> You've got the new Sony DCR. Seven million. Digital zoom. THX sound. The works. <laughs> Careful. We're going to have some fun with this baby, dude. Sammy, I told you to get a move on. Come in. Are you sure you're going to be OK on your own? I can take the day off if you like. No, you can't. Stop fussing. I'll be fine. Hurry up, you two. I've got stacks of work waiting for me back at the office. I'll see you later, then. Sammy! No. Gavin will be fine, Sammy. Now hurry up and get in the car. I don't want either of you to be late today. Not today. Why? Let's just say, I've got a little surprise waiting for you both. 
A surprise? Rad! Double rad! Peterson. Ah, good morning, Mrs. Job. Good morning, Sandy. Denzel. Um, trying to get more in touch with your feminine side today, Mr. Peterson. Beg your pardon? Oh, this, yes. I confiscated this lethal looking article from a young student of the female kind. I mean, look at the thing. I caught the girl thrusting these claspers in another girl's head. Almost the Koraya, she did. And apparently, you can eat them up. <sighs> Terrible. Children today, Mrs. Sharp, you've got to be watching them every moment. And I mean every moment. Well, it's a good job I've got you to keep them in check, isn't it? Absolutely. I'm glad you feel that way, Mrs. Sharp. It means a great deal to me to know that you think I'm doing such a worthwhile and commendable job at this school. Oh, I do, Mr. Peterson. Believe me, I do. But look, I can't stay in chat. I've got so much to do. Look, how are you? How was your first day back yesterday? I trust you settled in well. Yeah. Hey, you! Freeze! Again? Yeah. We got the goods. Some pretty strong stuff, though. <laughs> Not like your usual tat. I'll meet you in the usual place. Oh, we could have a busy day today. Dude! Oh, Derek, don't make me jump. Are you going to Gavin's again? After school? Um, yeah, probably. Why? Well, I just thought I might tag along, that's all. Derek! Dad! Derek, Lancelot Cabernet. I'm very proud of you, son. What are you going on about? Your news, boy, your news. Miss Sharp hasn't been acting very intelligent of late, but she's certainly got an eye for spotting talent. Talent? Dad, what are you going on about? You mean you don't know? You haven't told him. Told him what? Oh, for Petri dishes sake, come along. <laughs> 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 Prefects. Oh, so you noticed the poster. I wondered how long it would take. Isn't it a brilliant idea? I don't know why I didn't think of it sooner. You can't be serious. Of course I'm serious. With you and Derek here, helping run the school, patrolling the corridors, keeping an eye out for troublemakers, assessing your teacher's teaching methods, watching out for any unusual activity in class. What? No! I can't be a prefect. Why ever not? Because... because I can't. No one will want to know me. I'll lose all of my friends because of it. Oh, stop exaggerating. You don't see Derek here complaining. You're all right with your new position in the school, aren't you, Derek? I think it's totally rad, Mrs S. See? Derek's delighted. Come on, Sammy. I thought you'd be thrilled. You and Derek are two of Chalk Hill's brightest students. Two of? You mean you could have chosen somebody else? Actually, no. As far as I can tell, you and Derek are the best of the best. Top grades in all your subjects. Not one bad report in either of your files. And your attendance records? Well, they show that you've barely missed a day off school since you started. That's why I've chosen you both. You'll make perfect prefects. Yeah, we're waiting. Where are you?
I just wanted to say I'm sorry about earlier. Yeah, whatever. Look, Sammy, can you come straight over after school? This camera is amazing. I've got a brilliant idea I'm going to get those squids once and for all. Gavin, you're barely a day out of hospital. Have you got a death wish or what? You're obsessed. Just do it, yeah? I'll see you later. What do you want? Look, can I come in? I think your neighbours have had enough of my business to last them a lifetime. Look, Vicky, women have been taking me for a ride for the last few months. You've already messed me about, so why don't you just go? Please, you deserve an explanation. An explanation and an apology. I'm not asking for much, just a chance to say I'm sorry. Please. Who is it? It's Greg. Come in. I'm sorry to disturb. <sighs> Mrs. Shaw, are you all right? Yes, of course. Are you sure? It's just you seem rather agitated. To tell you the truth, I am a little. Oh? Oh, it's silly, really. Gavin came home from hospital this morning, and he's been giving me a hard time ever since. I just want to be there for him, you know? But he's shut me out. And then there's Luke Crombie being back at school. I can't help but feel... Oh, I don't know. Calm, come, Selena. You know Luke's not the one who attacked you. I know that now. But when I think about what I must have put that poor boy through... You mustn't blame yourself. At the time, all the evidence pointed to Luke. You took the action any other logical person would. Did I? Yes, you're right. But when I see him in the school playground... I can't help but feel a pang of guilt, and there's nothing I can do about it. And then when I think about what everybody else must have been saying behind his back... Don't beat yourself up about it. What's as important is that his name is now cleared. No one will say anything to him now. I hope you're right. I hope not. The complete opposite of that vicious Gary Squibb, though. All this time... All this time it was him. Yes, Selina, about the Squibbs. Gareth younger sister, Leticia. I think Then there's the pressure from the school governors trying to close the place down. Oh, I came here to fix things, not make them worse. Selena, we have a problem. <sighs> Mr. Cabernet, don't you know how to knock? Miss Sharp, quick, to the laboratory. I beg your pardon? There's a student, a student fitting in lab four. Fitting? What do you mean? She's spinning on the floor. A school nurse is with her. They sent for an ambulance. An ambulance? Is it that serious? Quickly! In the middle of dissecting a frog. Very inconsiderate. So you see, it all got blown out of proportion. Stuart and I have a long history together and... Well, it's not easy to see that... ...of your sister. 
Well, whatever is going on between him and my sister, you can't hold her responsible. She's just a minor. She's 14. You had no right to call her those names. I'm sorry for everything, really. I guess when you've been with someone as long as I have, well, it's not easy breaking up. So is that why you jumped to me? Excuse me? Was that for his benefit? No, of course not. I don't care about him anymore. And I certainly don't care what he thinks. Really? Really? Look, can we just start afresh? Pretend yesterday evening never happened. We've just come back from the pub and we've gone back to my place. I don't know. Why not? Well, I don't know if it's worth it. All girls seem to do is make promises and let me down. I'm tired of it, to be honest. Yeah, but that's where I'm different. I can offer you so much more. I'm not like other girls, Paul. Th think of me as a, as a bruised peach, fallen from a tree, just waiting for the right man to kiss me better, to bite into my sweet skin and sample my succulent flesh, to suck out my... <clears throat> Victoria Harris! Oh, Mr Oliver, hello. Yes. No, I'm actually with a client at the moment. No, I'm not skiving. Yeah, of course. Yep. Oh, this client's got a huge potential. Of course, I'll be back at my desk within the hour. Got to go. Can't keep the client waiting. <sighs> Stupid old duffer. Oh, my boss. Anyway, where was I? Oh, yeah. I'm not like other girls, Paul. I can see that. I promise you, once you've had the taste of Victoria Harris, you won't be able to get the flavour off your lips. Steady on, my mum's only in the kitchen. You know how to treat a lady, Paul. <sighs> Let me be your lady. You can be my knight in shining armour. Throw me in your steed and ride me away. <sighs> Paul, please don't turn me down. Oh. I'll do all a lady should for a man and more. Will you? Oh, I'll, I'll let you watch the footy while I so gently massage your supple body. I'm not really much of a footy fan. I'll cook for you every night. You know what they say about oysters. Well, uh, that sounds great, but the only thing I'm interested in now is finding a decent job. Then I'll get you one. I'll get you the best job going. You can do that. Of course. That's my job. I get people jobs every day. Well, uh, thanks. Don't thank me, Paul. I'm here to satisfy you. If that's what you want, then I'll do it. That's all I've wanted since I've said goodbye to uni. Best thing tomorrow morning, I'll go about finding you the most suitable, most fitting package there is available. Shouldn't be too difficult. An attractive stud like yourself. Your boss. <sighs> oh, meddling old fool. <sighs> this have happened? That girl? Uh, yes, Selina, about the girl. What could have brought the seizures on? There's nothing in her school medical files. According to them, she's not allergic to anything. Selina, I don't think it's an allergic reaction. Her poor parents. I wonder if Muriel managed to get hold of them in the end. Uh, yes, I think she did. Selina, I have to what tell... What could have happened? She's only 12. Selina, I know. I found these in the girl's pocket. I took them while no one's looking. They're not. I also know where the girl got them from. Well, thanks for hearing me out and for giving me another chance. You won't regret it. Believe me. The only thing you'll regret is that you didn't meet me sooner. We're gonna have fun, you and I. I can tell. Right. Oh, my mouth is salivating already, just thinking about it. Anyway, I best be off. You'll call me later, yeah? Yeah, of course. You let me know how it goes with the job, right? Oh, I won't disappoint you, babykins. I just hope you can fully satisfy me with the best kind of commission for my services. Two can play at your game, Stuart Ray. The difference is, 
I always win. Okay, bye. They're sending some officers over now. Are you sure about what you've seen? I'm positive. Their behavior was extremely suspect. I can draw no other conclusion. God. I don't know how much more of this I can take. First to get threatened on the first day here by that squib. Something that still wakes me in the middle of the night. Then Gavin gets beaten up and put in hospital. And the school governors are threatening closure. And now this? Gavin hates me. It's like I can't do anything right anymore. And now this. Drugs. Drugs. Chalk Hill High. Do you realise they could close us down for this? I could lose everything. All thanks to those god awful scripts. Have a good day, Scott. Have a good day.